Hey guys. <clears throat> How are you this morning? Why am I upside down again? You know, holy crap. I thought I figured this out last time. Am I upside down for you guys or am I right side up? Upside down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try not to make y'all real sick, but I'm going to switch the camera around. Hold on. Let's see if it makes a difference. There was a bunch of updates to apps last night. It's probably an update issue. That didn't make any difference, did it? <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Wee. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Art Sherpa. Yeah, it didn't make any difference. I'm still upside down. You know, there were like, I didn't even look to see what apps updated last night, but there were eight or nine updates last night. Um, so sorry about that. We'll have to work with it the way it is. I will flip the picture around. Um, I'll flip, I'll flip the picture around when I put it up on YouTube. You really want me to change it around or just leave it? It's okay. All right. So here we go. So we're going to do a fish today. So we're going to use a couple of our, Hey, good morning. If I sound kind of funny, it's because I'm a little bit, uh, icky this morning for my allergies. I've got a cough drop in my mouth actually. It helps control the cough, the coughing and the mucus and the, that's probably TMI this morning. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to work on this fish and we're going to work on a, um, <laughs> just down on your heads, Aaron, you're so funny. Um, we're going to work on a couple of different techniques to do this fish. I've got my, one of my books out here and I opened it up to this picture of this flying fish. It's called a spot fin flying fish. Good morning. So I thought he was interesting so that we would do him. And I've got one that's kind of ready to go here that I've already done my sketch on and I've done a little bit of a background and I'm going to show you guys how I did that. I wanted to do it ahead of time because the background takes a little bit of time to dry and there's really no way to speed it up. So we're going to put that to the side and grab our pencil and I'll explain what this is um, as we go along. Yeah, I love the orangey reds. He's got some really pretty dark colors in here. You could use a brown. You could use, of course, Payne's gray. I'm wondering what violet would look like as the dark shadow color in this fish. Paint a butt. Okay, seriously? You know, two seconds in, we've got somebody wants me to paint a butt. At least they didn't ask to see my boobs this time. Block. <laughs> He's gone, yeah. So if you guys see somebody like that, um, if you can block them, that's great. If you can't, um, uh, let me know. I'll try to catch them. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is we wanna just do our sketching um, to get our basic shape and layout on here. And again, you wanna just do light pencil strokes. You don't, no digging any holes to China with your pencil. Yeah, trolls, trolls are everywhere. All right, so the first, I'm gonna start with his head here. I want to make sure you guys can see him. There we go. Uh, if you don't have any like books of um, you know animals, then you know you definitely can go to the library. But you also can, um, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's see. You can definitely also. Um, there we go. Um, go to Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Okay, so I'm going to put his head in, and you definitely can do this by just making shapes. So his head's kind of a, a funny shape. So I'm gonna, something like that, not quite a circle, and I'm gonna put his little eye right here. Um, I'm not sure if it's another eye or a mouth, or but there's something right here, another piece of anatomy, so we're gonna kind of sketch that in. Then we've got this sort of long teardrop for his body. <clears throat> um, again, we're just doing a light pencil -y sketch. Yeah. We're going to start to put some of his fins in. The 
the first one over here starts about right there. And again, we're using the book for inspiration. I don't expect you to copy it completely. And uh, you guys have watched me long enough to know that when I'm doing these, if it, you know, my image runs off the page, unlike the one in my reference photo or reference book, I'm not so concerned about that. I'm gonna put in the other, there's a fin in the back here. I'm gonna just put that much of a line in. Yeah, I, I definitely can. So normally I wouldn't do it this dark, but you guys are having trouble seeing. I don't want you to do it this dark, do it lighter. This is not a Stabilo, this is a Faber-Castell um, Jumbo 2B pencil. I like it because it is um, nice and fat, and when my hand, my arthritis is bothering me, it's easy to, um, uh, it's easy to hold on to. And definitely if you're somebody who really is concerned about drawing to exact scale, this is probably not the way to sketch for you. You probably want something that's a lot more precise. I am, I'm more interested in an artistic impression usually than I am drawing exactly to scale. And I kind of like the fact that he's kind of running off the page here and that his, his uh, other fins are not going to actually all be on the page. Yeah, I love this pencil and it, you know, especially for those of us who have, you know, issues, you have any issues with your hands and as we get older, we do. Then this big fat pencil is really easy to hold on to. I know there's lots of like attachments you can stick on your pencil, but this is e e easy for me. Okay, so once you have your sketch, then we want to work on the background because the, the way that I did the background on this one takes a while to dry. <clears throat> and yeah, there's lots of fish on Pinterest. So definitely go to Pinterest and, um, you know, just put in fish and see p fish pictures and see what pops up and use one of those for inspiration. Now, I'm going to put some water on here. And as you notice, I evidently this brush was a little dirty because the water is clean. And I guess I didn't clean all the paint off of it because you notice the little bit of yellow that's on there. That's all right. We're going to go with that. I've got some light blue here in the lid of my palette, and I'm going to just use what's on here. You, for this picture, I don't want the color to be very dark. I want it to be light. Um, but the darker the pigments are, the paint is when you do this, the more that it, it shows up. We're going to make it grainy. I'm going to put some green. I did blue and green in the other one. This is coming out more yellow because evidently there was some yellow paint on this big brush. You want to get the page really wet. If some goes into the fish, I'm not so concerned about it. It did in the other one too. <clears throat> All right. Then this is just plain ordinary like generic table salt. In fact, this is Albertson's brand and we haven't had an Albertson's store in my area of California in like 10 years. So I've had this thing of salt for a while. This is a Royal Langnickel um, one inch flat um, Zen brush. I got this on clearance at Michael's. Um, they were having a big clearance and it's actually, uh, I think it's actually an acrylic brush but I like it for doing washes and watercolor. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I'm pretty sure it was clearance either at Michael's or, um, I'm pretty sure it was Michael's. Okay, so I want you to just get some table salt, ordinary plain old table salt. And you're going to sprinkle it where you have all the water and the paint. Yes, this can be messy. Too much salt. You're gonna let that dry completely before you do anything else. 
my or arrange my table a little bit better so you guys are going to be able to see. All right. So as this dries, the salt's going to hey hey Allie, the salt's going to pick up some of the pigment and it's going to leave a grainy texture. And I'll show you in the one that's dry. So this is the one that's dry that I did yesterday. And can you see like here? This way? No, this way. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. By my finger, the grainy texture there in the paint, that's from the salt. When the salt dried, it picked up some of the pigment and it left this grainy texture in the paint. And it's just gonna give this kind of watery, watery, um, watercolory background of this fish and a really interesting texture and give him some extra life. Now I have salt all over my table. <coughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take some smaller brushes because that one is too big. And we are going to wet our palette of paint. Uh, there it is, with my squirt bottle. I hope you all are having a good week. You're having fun playing with your watercolor paints, I hope. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna use kind of a medium round medium for the ones that I picked. This is a Princeton Select round number four. And I'm going to start with um, New Gamboge, which is this one here. Oops. And I'm going to, referring to my picture of my fish, <clears throat> I'm going to um, start with, you know, my lightest color, work my way darker, because unlike acrylics, that's what you want to do. I'm going to lay in some pigments. If you have any parts of the fish that you want to leave, that you want to be white, you either have to leave them white, or you have to go back and add Chinese white, or you can add... Um, Sometimes I go in with a gel pen. So I'm gonna lay a bit of pigment and then I'm gonna just come in with, this is just water. And I'm gonna spread my pigment around. I've started to see a lot of you doing uh, watercolor painting and you're doing fish and birds. Good afternoon. And I'm so excited. Has everybody seen Cindy's Utter Two Birds on um, Facebook that she's been doing? She did a duck and a, um, I think a pelican. And I think Cheryl, haven't you been doing some birds too? Okay, I'm gonna stick with the new gamboge for, for right now. Now, when it comes to these fins, I want to blend some of this line, these lines a bit, but I don't want to blend all of them because if you notice in the inspiration photo, he has these ridges. So we want to blend some of that, but not all of it because we want those ridges to be there. Yeah, I have to stop buying watercolor paint. I keep saying that, but my drawer where I store all my tubes is full. <laughs> I have to stop buying. I have to stop it. Hey, hello from Italy. My grandmother and grandfather were from Italy. Oriano, near Luca. Okay. So we're gonna just go around our fish and I'm barely, right now, barely, barely touching the paper. I'm, I'm referring back to my photo, which is off camera because I got, want you guys to see more of what I'm doing than I want you to see the photo. And I am putting, starting to put in some of these lines and then I'm gonna come in with some water. I'm gonna blur them just a bit, not too much. So a little tip or trick, if you let your pigment dry just a bit before you come in with the water, 
it's going to still move but it's not going to move as much and so you'll be able to spread the color out a little bit but you're going to still have that line and sometimes you want that So let's come over here and let's do the same thing over here. And as we're going along, of course, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And also, when you're doing something like this, you know, the more water you put on, the more it's going to blend. And maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want it to blend less, so then you put less water. You also, of course, can go in with a rag and do some lifting if you get it too dark. Water is the big key. And, you know, some watercolor artists will tell you the kind of water you use. I use tap water. Um, some artists only use bottled water. Um, there were some big debates about that. I just use tap water. Okay, he's looking pretty good. I want to put a little bit of something down here on his tail. Not too much because his back fin is in the photo is pretty white. You know what would be a fun fish to do is um, one of those, what are they called, angel fish, those goldfish with the big, big wings. All right, now I'm going to go in with some nickel, az nickel azo yellow. Jeez, I can't speak this morning. Which is the sort of goldeny yellow, less orangey, a duller. Um, cooler yellow. The new Gamboge is very warm and bright. Okay, so we're going to go in here. This is where his one eye is, and there's a dark spot here. There's a dark spot here. I will, of course, post this up on Facebook. It takes me a few days, as you all know, to get them up there. Um, they take a little bit more video editing. And if I don't take time with my video editing, then we have issues like what happened this morning where I had to take down Watercolor Wednesday because there was a video editing error and fix it. So then it's lo reloading right now, though, FYI. Because, <laughs> you know. hate video editing and I'm, I'm honestly I'm not that good at it so I can paint you pretty pictures but don't ask me to do some fancy video editing so again we're working our way from darker to lighter right now we're working with nickel azo, nickel azo yellow Okay, so once the watercolor is dry, that's a great question. Once the watercolor is dry, you can choose to do nothing to your painting. Know that, that if it gets wet, the water will reactivate the paint. Um, you can also, though, um, set your watercolor or seal your watercolor just like you would any other painting. And the best way to do that is with some sort of a spray um, like uh, Krylon's workable fixative, which you then could work over again with more watercolor or other media, um, or a matte finish spray or some kind of a spray varnish. I would recommend an aerosol because I think you're going to have an easier time. Um, it's drier and it's not going to um, um, 
reactivate the paint. Um, I would let your watercolor painting dry really well for a day or two and make sure it's really, really dry before you do any of those. Um, There's some really great YouTube videos by different artists out there that um, go over how to seal your watercolor paintings. I do recommend it. I have an old, um, it's actually like an acrylic pen and ink and watercolor um, piece that was done by one of my aunts when she was in college and it was never sealed. I did actually as an adult go back and um, seal it in a frame so no oxygen can get in there but um, the ink started to fade and the watercolor even the you know top of the line brands at some point granted that point maybe you know a hundred years from now but at some point they will start to do that too so you do want to seal it especially if it's something that you really enjoy and that you really want to keep and you want your you know children to keep and all that so I'm just going around with my you know slightly darker color and I'm adding it into you know different spots on my fish I love using Pinterest for inspiration. Um, it's a really great source. So I definitely do recommend it, um, especially when you're on a budget. And or you just want to live in your house. I mean, we'd all love a ton of art books, but you know, they take up a lot of space. Yes, can you hear the air conditioner come on? I mean, you know, it's only October here in California and it's, you know, still like 100 degrees outside. I just don't get it. Thank you for all the hearts. I haven't switched paint colors yet. I'm still using the one color. Okay, he's already looking interesting. All right, so now we're gonna go in with another darker color. And I think I am going to, I'm, real, I'm gonna listen to my instincts and I'm gonna listen to what my creative part of me is wanting to play with this morning, which is quadrochrome gold. Now, Daniel Smith has two colors of quadrochrome gold. Um, quadrochrome gold and quadrochrome gold deep. We will probably use both on this fish with some quadrochrome sienna. And I have no idea if I'm saying that right, by the way. <laughs> Probably not. So again, we're gonna go in and we're going to work into our darker spots. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm more of a cold weather girl. I'm happier when it's cold. <laughs> just and you know in California we don't usually have so many of these super hot days this is not normal for us so I'm gonna blend some of this I'm not gonna blend all of it and I'm gonna go around my fish and I'm gonna do that everywhere I'm starting again at his head and working my way around. Now, how much detail you put in your fish just depends on you, what kind of painting you want to do, how precise you want to be, do you want to be more expressive with your fish and suggest shapes rather than actually paint or draw them in. That's totally up to you and you have to decide as you're painting what you want and you know play play just play and and try it a couple different ways and see what makes you happy probably blended that a little too much right there I have family in Texas I talked to them online. I don't actually, I, I don't, I, 
I haven't been to Texas as an adult. I won't say I've never been to Texas. When I was a baby, I have been a couple times, but I don't really remember too much. The only time as an adult I've been to Texas was at um, the um, airport on my way to Germany. Dang, it was hot, even inside the air conditioning. <laughs> but, you know, they have Jerry's Artorama in Texas. And I'm thinking someday I have to go to Texas for Jerry's, to see Jerry's Artorama. I just, you know, I think I have to. Oh, those of you who are in some of the Western United States, and I guess Georgia, I, oddly enough, if you have an Aaron Brothers art and framing near you, and if you're not sure, go to their website. They're only in a few states, including Georgia and Idaho, Texas, um, Washington, Oregon. And uh, they're having a big sale right now. Yeah, there's Jerry's in a couple of states, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to go on vacation. These watercolors are Daniel Smith, my favorite watercolor brand. Um, I'm building my palette. They're a little pricey. Aaron's Art and Framing uh, uh, sells, of course, framing supplies, but they are a subsidiary of Michael's Arts and Crafts. And they right now are having a um, buy one, get two free canvas sale along with a buy one, get one free uh, paintbrush sale. And I think also their um, generic brand of paint is on sale. But it's a good time to stock up on canvases and paint brushes because they've got some, they carry the Princeton Select brush. So just keep going around your fish with gradually darker colors, referring to your photo to make sure you're putting those darker colors in the right places. You know, I've said this before in different videos, but when I'm painting, especially when I'm painting and talking to you all, I sometimes lose track of where my shadows are or where my sun is. So um, I have been known to, especially on canvases, on my easel to put a post-it note to the side that says sun <laughs> so, that, so that I know which way the sun is coming from and I don't get confused especially if I paint a little bit and then come back that's what this is these are out of the tube and then I um, just let them dry and then I reconstitute them um, with some water I'm I'm building up my palette so I'm I need to add some true blues and a couple of uh, reds I, I want to get some Prussian blue in particular and some ultramarine blue and then probably alizarin crimson and um, probably cadmium red. Those are the colors that are missing out of this palette. I do have my Van Gogh palette not too far away in case I decided I need some of those colors. Um, so I am not... Um, super picky about my brushes, but I do have to say I prefer synthetics. Um, these looking pretty cute. The uh, Princeton Select, I believe, is a synthetic brush. Um, I do have some natural um, bristle brushes. Oh, there's fuzz on my brush. Um, and they are nice and all, and they hold a lot of water. but they're very expensive. Um, most of the time when I'm painting with watercolor, I am painting with a, a round brush about this size, about a number four to a six. That seems to be my favorite size. Um, I will share with you guys something I just got um, as for traveling in just a minute. Um, when I'm painting with acrylics, I prefer a filbert brush. I do use them occasionally in watercolor, but not as much as I do in um, acrylic paint. You can get away with just having one round brush. 
I would make it a medium size, something about this size, because um, you can do a lot with that. You can do fine points and something fatter by just pushing on the brush a little harder. Um, if you can afford it a little bit more, I would suggest something bigger and flatter like this one inch flat so that you can do washes. So that's already looking cute. All right, let's go in with, let's start to add in some reds because our fish is looking a little bit like a goldfish. Not that I have a problem with that and we could switch the colors up, use some artistic license, but let's add something more red into him. And I think I'm gonna use the red that's in the lid of my palette. And I think I'm gonna just add some clodocrodone gold deep to it to make it a little bit less crimson-y and make it a little bit more orangey. So he doesn't turn out to be a really pink fish. Okay, I think that's a good color. All right, so again, we're gonna start up at the head. Now he's got these like spots. It almost looks like a heart shape on his head. So I'm gonna just, I'm barely touching the um, paper. I'm just using the tip of my brush. He's got kind of a spine line that comes down this way. Now I'm gonna put that on there and then I'm gonna get my brush wet with just water and see how that just blends really nicely. I'm gonna just blend the one side and leave the other side as straight as I can get it because there is a line down his back in the photograph. Now in the photograph, this is pretty stark. So I'm going to blend it a bit, but I'm not gonna blend it too much. Yeah, I, you know, in my crafty days, I did a lot of one stroke painting. In fact, I have a friend who's um, a master one stroke painter, uh, although she doesn't do it, I don't think too much anymore. Um, and she's ta she taught me a lot and it's really fun. And I still find myself occasionally using those some of those techniques um, for doing leaves and flowers with just a basic flat brush. All right, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna go and I'm just looking for where I see kind of a darker reddish orange color on my fish in the photograph. And again, I'm gonna choose to blend some of it, but not all of it. And you will notice that you get a different effect if you do it on dry paper and then wet it versus wet the paper first and then do this. So I encourage you when you're doing these paintings, you know, try both ways and see which one you like better. See how you can get, thank you, see how you can get, you know, your technique. What works for you and each painting will be different and all paintings have an ugly duckling stage. So just keep working the paint. It doesn't matter whether you're working with acrylic or you're working with watercolor. They all have a stage when you think, holy crud, what did I just do? That is really hideous. <laughs> they do, they all do. So that's why you should do some of the practice cards because then you get past that point where you're scared of doing the water first or any, any of the certain techniques. You, you just work through the ugly duckling stage until you get something that you like. Remember with watercolor, unlike acrylic paint, you know, the color is going to stain. You can lift it a bit, but it's going to stain. Um, so it's uh, harder to correct mistakes, but it's not impossible. There's always a creative way around something that you perceive as a mistake. Um, and maybe that mistake happened for a reason because something else needs to go there. Now you can always go over your acrylic, your watercolor paint with, you know, white gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. Um, I'm just starting to use some of this darker color as um, 
kind of putting in the shadows here. I'm barely, again, I'm, I love this brush because it has such a nice point on it and I can just get these sort of lines on here without trying too hard. Yeah, the Quidocrito, some colors will lift really, really well and some colors won't. Um, some colors have more staining um, than others. So the darker, generally speaking, for me, at least what I've found is the darker the color, the more it stains. The lighter colors lift pretty easily. So I'm just going around my fish with my dark red color that I created. And I know it's off camera now. Yeah, I like their um, Quadacrono yellow. I also like their Hansa yellow, um, which is a great color. Um, the Hansa Yellow I own is Hansa Yellow Medium. And generally speaking, it seems to be that when I'm buying a color like Hansa Yellow, whether I'm buying it in acrylic or watercolor, I seem to gravitate towards the medium rather than the light. Um, it's more lemony for me, and I can lighten it up um, with water. I can lighten it up with water, or of course, by mixing it with Chinese white. Um, but I like the bright lemony yellow color. So you notice I left this for a little bit and now I'm coming in and adding some water. It's not going to all blend out, but that's what I wanted. And the flying fish has these wing-like fins, so I really want to try to capture that in my, in my painting. Now right here around his head. In the book, he's in a um, black background, but here we've got the white background, so I'm going to do a little bit of sort of outlining, which is not something I normally do, but you notice I'm away from him a little bit. Yes, you can. Give me a second. Um, so that I leave some white. There we go. And I'm also going to do the same thing down here. I'm, again, I'm, I love this brush, like I said, I'm barely touching the paper. And then I'm going to go in with some water towards the inside of the fish and just blend some of those lines in towards the inside of the fish. So it blends with the you know, color in his body a bit. At, at the same time, he starts to pop out from the page around him. Okay, that's without any super darks in there. This is 140 pound Strathmore watercolor paper. It is the uh, red pad, what is it? 400 series. And this is my Daniel Smith watercolor palette. It's in an empty schmink box. I'll show you guys real quick and then we'll go back to the fish. We'll let him dry for a second. Um, this is the schmink um, 48 pan watercolor box. You can actually get 52 pans in because you can squeeze one extra one in each row. You notice over here that I've got one empty one. And this whole part comes out. You could actually use the whole inside of it to blend. Um, and you can't really tell from this too much what the colors are, which is why I always do a color key. We talked about charts on, on Monday with Deco Art. I always do a color key when I get new uh, watercolor paints. You can tell I splattered some paint on here. Um, 
and this is the these are the colors I own and you can see by looking at it if you know anything about painting that I, I've been collecting the colors and I'm obviously almost complete here but I need um, a couple of true blues and I need a couple of true reds so that's going to be the next thing I buy I have to you know save up for them because that right there is like 40 or 50 dollars worth of paint so all right so let's go back to our fish so far we haven't used a smaller brush we're still using the number four round um, so now I'm gonna start going in some really dark with some really darks and you know I'm really intrigued by the idea of using a violet and I have this color that is called Rose of Ultramarine which and one of the things I love about Daniel Smith is they have these paint colors like look at this opera pink and then they have moon glow which is this purpley gray order yours from Jackson's I didn't know about the ones from Jackson's when I got the empty schmink palette if I had known I would not have the empty schmink palette I would have gotten it from Jackson's um, so we're gonna use old Rose of ultramarine and then we may use some moon glow too um, for our really dark parts so let's do Rose of ultramarine first and again yeah it's so much cheaper at Jackson's even with shipping I'm gonna tell you the moon moon glow is the a fabulous color so I'm gonna start to put my dark spots in here and I'm not gonna get too far with this before I come in with some water And if I get too much pigment, then I'm going to lift it probably with my rag since it's handy. Try to think when you're painting about using an unexpected color for your shadow color. Just because your shadow color in the picture is a black color doesn't mean you have to use that for your shadow color um, think about using a violet or a dark Prussian blue that's one of the reasons I love Payne's gray this dark color see you have to have some darks and and lights or some neutrals to make those bright colors really pop um, it's really important yeah, I love this color. It's one of my favorite Daniel Smith colors along with Moon Glow. And because it's sort of a, um, you know, a reddish color, it goes great with the fish. Just again I'm going around my fish I'm using the photo in my book for inspiration of where to put the colors you know where the shadows are in the photo instead of using black I'm using this dark rose of ultramarine as I said earlier this video will be up on YouTube in a few days um, it will also be on Periscope for 24 hours for playback um, so you guys can play and you can watch the nice thing about having it on YouTube is you can pause I don't know that you can really do that on Periscope because honestly I've been doing more broadcasting than I have been watching so I haven't, I haven't had a chance to watch too many Now you can see that um, this Rose of Ultramarine, it doesn't lift super well. So, you know, you need to, you know, be careful and cautious. 
about where you put it and you know like I got some right there but you know that's gonna just have to be I think it gives my fish some character so we're good with it let's see if I can lift any more not too much it's all right Um, I don't know that I did, to be honest. I don't remember. Um, I know that I show my schmink palette on YouTube. Um, I did a long video with um, one of my friends and um, fellow Crazy Island family members um, where I actually show this schmink palette. My Daniel, I show almost all my palettes, um, but I don't remember if I actually did an unboxing. I don't think I did. I, I do know there's somebody on YouTube that did do one. I don't think it was me. Thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah, one of you all um, let me know this morning that there was a video uh, editing error in today's Watercolor Wednesday, so I appreciate that. That was how I caught it, because, you know, <laughs> I would not normally catch it. So we're just we're adding in you know our colors we're blending them a bit that we're using the rose of ultramarine by Dan we're using daniel smith watercolors this morning for those who are just joining us oh they do look at that So I'm going to go into a few places and I'm going to add in some darker, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I don't know. Darker um, stripes of pigment, especially in the fins, um, that I don't really blend out so much. I may blend them a little bit, but to really start to, you'll notice that if you do this and you're not, you know, just kind of smudge them rather than blend them too much. It's going to start to give him some, really some character, make him pop. Give him some life. Now at some point, you know, you're going to want to still have the reference photo out, but at some point you're going to do what you want to do, what's best for the painting, rather than what's in the photo. Those are sometimes two different things. And remember, we're being inspired by the photo, we're not necessarily trying to copy it exactly. Oh, thank you so much. This fin down here needs some help, so let's see what we can do about this down here. I'm still using the Rose of Ultramarine. I haven't switched to any other colors yet. I do think I will, but I haven't yet. Thank you! One thing I do with Periscope when I'm broadcasting and when I do watch, although I haven't had time lately, um, and I do it with both the iPad and the phone, FYI, I started doing it when we had that latest, that last update that screwed up Periscope, the Facebook, I mean the iOS update. I go into my general settings and I turn off the auto lock that makes it go to sleep. <laughs> um, 
Otherwise, I just seem to have nothing but issues. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm thinking I want to do, let's see. I'm going to grab some Moon Glow and we're going to give it a try. The Moon Glow again is in the probably violet range, but it's a blackish grayish color. Put it in the darkest parts of our fish. Now, some watercolorists are very anti adding like white gouache to your painting to bring out the highlights if you forget, you know, or you lose the white spots. I am not like that. I don't find a, I don't have a problem with that. I like to add the white. Um, but what I usually do is dry my painting first. because I usually want to control the white a lot more than I have wanted to control the other colors. Right now, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not looking at the book that much. I'm looking more at my fish and what I think works for him. gonna go in with just water now this color uh, moon glow this does stain quite a bit and you can move it around but um, if you don't catch it right away you can't move it too much not really. I'm going to also, let's see, a couple of um, yeah, yeah, that's a complicated question for me. <laughs> yes and no. Um, I like using them when I'm working with like my ink tense pencils or my Stabilo pencils. Um, but when I'm painting, I prefer um, a brush like this. 
And to that end, for my travel kit, I just got some uh, some new brushes I'll share with you before we go off the air here. And they're synthetic before somebody asks. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with um, something really dark, um, probably Payne's Gray, which is almost black. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in, which will really make the other color pop. Um, my preferred water storage brush, you know, water brush that has the storage in the handle is the Pentel water brush. Um, the Koi aren't bad, but again, my favorite is the Pentel, um, probably because the handle is nice and fat and it's easy to hold. Um, so I own a lot of the Pentel brushes. Uh, I do have a couple of the Koi, um, and I like them. Uh, but my favorite again is the Pentel. It's also, um, you know, fairly affordable and it comes in um, three sizes. Um, the Koi is nice because it um, comes apart and it has that nice plug in the handle for when you're traveling. Okay, so his tail is fairly white. My fish's tail came out fairly dark. And I left some white, but some of my fish is a little dark. So this is where you come in with your Chinese white. Make sure that your brush is clean and that the water you put in here is from the clean side of your water. I have two pots of water, one for dirty, one for clean, so that your white stays white. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add in my, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna dry this first. You know what, let's dry it first. Oops. Now let's go in with our white. So I'm going to take my Chinese white and I'm going to come in and I'm going to just add, look at what happens when you add that little bit of white. Take it back. You only used it twice and it died. Your heat gun died. Take it back. I've had mine a long time. I bought it to do it back when I was still doing, you know, as we all were, more scrapbooking and greeting cards. And yeah, who knew it was going to be my favorite paint tool? <laughs> I had no idea. So I'm adding white highlights using the book page as inspiration for where those highlights should be. I'm just using the paintbrush and the Chinese white to basically just draw some lines on the fish. I'm barely touching the brush to the fish so that I get a, a nice thin line. I love the kind of life that the little pop of white gives your watercolor painting. It just gives it gives the it gives it some life, the little pop.
Yeah, no, you know, as I, I'm always telling my students, no digging any holes to China with your paintbrush or your pencil. Just going around and making sure I've got, you know, highlights where I want them. I think that's pretty good. Might blend this one just a bit. See where I wait. I teach with Crazy Island University, and I'm then just doing this. You can go to crazyislanduniversity.com. I haven't done any watercolor classes for them yet. I'm a little behind in my filming for standalones, but I teach with their um, year-long journaling Crazy Island style course. <laughs> I'll never see yours. So there is my fish, my flying fish. Now, these are the two new things I got for my travel kit recently. Now, this is my favorite castell. And look at this. It's a portable water pot. And it folds up small. And these are by Midas Touch. These are synthetic. Um, these are, I know, right? These are paint brushes. I know, you know, I don't know if we're all girls here or not this morning, but, and there's only nine of us right now. Okay, to me, they look like tampons. But <laughs> it's kind of an odd shape for a paintbrush, but I gotta tell you, um, look at this. I know, right? So you get around, and that thing is, the handles are nice and thick, and it's a nice big paintbrush. You get around, they're synthetic. They're, you get a flat, there is another set by somebody else that's natural, it's a, uh, twice the price. And then you get a filbert. And then the, I have one really small one that came with my Windsor Newton travel set, um, that is a really tiny, a point like this one and so between the four now these are perfect travel brushes and they just fold up into the handle these are called Midas touch M-I-D-A-S touch and they come in the set of three with the little holder I can't decide actually if it looks like bullets <laughs> or tampons, I don't know. It reminds me of tampons. I used to have a little case like this to hold them in my purse. <laughs> Amazon. And I'll show you the other brush that I have because I have a spare one. Let's see. Oh, let me get the one out. Let me see. Ugh. So this is my travel paint palette. <clears throat> These are great portable things. This is um, my travel paint palette and this is the other brush that I have. And the, uh, loving this brush spurred me on to, uh, especially for traveling, on to a search for more proper travel brushes. Um, I do keep some regular brushes in my kit but sometimes it's nice to just have something tiny that folds up. And I did misplace this for a while and I contacted Windsor Newton and asked them, you know, do you just sell the brushes? They said no. I honestly think that's a marketing mistake. They should sell just these. 
Um, and while the handle's a little bit short, it has a nice small round tip on it, and it folds up really small and fits really well inside the handle. So I went to Amazon for, and just typed in travel water brushes and I found these. And um, yeah, love them. So between this one, which is really small, and then the three larger ones, it's perfect. My bristles were a bit splayed, probably from the last time I used it. There we go. Now it's all now it's all nice. The only problem with these is you have to be careful how you put the brush end into the handle when you pack it away. But most of us are pretty careful. So and then this is a small, same kind of box as the big one. This is the little one that's supposed to hold, I think six half six full pans or twelve half pans. I took the insert out. Um, that came with it and I put my paints in the pans um, with magnets on the back um, and then I could get see and then I could get more pans in here and for my travel set I have a mixture of Koi and Daniel Smith and this is a good this is a good color range selection to travel with because I can just take this anywhere and paint pretty much anything and then I just have this rubber band to keep it closed just in case so when I'm traveling or flying nothing pops open. I don't really need it. It's just a precaution. So I hope you all give your fish a try and I'm, I saw somebody posted they never do figure they never did figure painting. Well I hope you give it a try. Of course you don't have to start with this. Do some basics and just do some experiments where you're not freaking yourself out trying to paint anything. You know, just do like this is watercolor. We talked about this in the first episode. Uh, there's news on Amazon. Where's the most arts and crafts on Amazon Saturday? Oh, good, good, good to know. So put that in your like uh, shopping cart, and then wait until the price drops, and then then buy it. And I could see me wanting another, you know, two of these because when you're watercoloring, you want one for dirty and one for clean water. And this, I mean, how handy is this? So do some of these practice cards for those of you who are too intimidated to do anything like a fish or a bird. And this, these are just playing with watercolors, what you can get them to do and not do you know, blending different colors, scratching into the color, playing and you know, I want it, we're going to start using one of these techniques in our paintings every week. Like today we use the bit with the salt for the background and you can see if you look at the fish, you know, of course he pops out from the background, but he, there's this interesting kind of watery texture that just lends itself so well to um, the whole composition and makes it interesting. Thank you so much. So don't forget to support my YouTube channel as well as Periscope and um, you know I I don't have lots of online classes that I teach except for Periscope and YouTube um, but my YouTube channel is monetized so I can try to make some money on it and there is a fan fan funding something on YouTube. You have to go look. I don't know. If you choose to do that, you don't have to, but you know, go check it out. What subject matter next week? I don't know. What do you guys want to paint? You let me know. I should stop picking. We should start painting what you guys want to paint. We can do more birds and fish or we can do something else. Oh, I was going to show you what I was going to do with this. See, we're not done yet. Flowers. We can do flowers. So one of the things you can do with your watercolor paints, are, these are some of my... Oh good. These are some of my stamps. I have watercolor Wednesday playlist on YouTube. So uh, we can do flowers. Next week let's do flowers. So these are some of my stamps. You can buy them in my Etsy shop. I stamp them on this watercolor paper with waterproof ink. This was archival. I think Ranger's archival ink. And this is hot press. And I'm not a big fan of watercoloring on hot press paper because I like the texture of cold press. Um, but if you're going to do this, you want to get a nice clear stamped image. This, these are, um, okay, so I'll answer that in a minute, Erin. Um, so to get a nice clear stamped image, you don't want the texture on the paper. So I chose the hot press. 
and these stamps are done in deep etched red rubber they come unmounted sheets in sets of two, there's two sets there they come individually in wood mount or individually in clean mount um, now so these I stamped these last night so this is good and dry and when you have some of your leftover paint or you have to wipe your brush off you can go in here And just like with your other paintings, this the ink from the stamp is not going to move. But you can color it in with your watercolor paints. And get some practice pushing your paint around and seeing what your pigments will do and not do by painting in a stamped image. I almost forgot I had these off to the side because, you know, I moved them out of my direct line of sight, so, <laughs> you know, these things happen. Yeah, we can do a flower and then we can do a feather. And so, work on, yeah, and we can do, we can work on shading. So I just laid in some pigment, now I'm just spreading it out with water, just like I did before with the fish. Hey, you know what, if you guys are friends with me on Facebook, um, either PM me the list of suggestions, or make sure you put it on the um, video when it goes to YouTube, or start a list over in my Facebook group. Any of those. Because I'm only going to remember flower. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. So you can just have some fun painting in a stamped image and then you're not pressured to worry about so much about the drawing. Yeah, I know you guys like the live, so, and I know not everybody does Periscope, but I have so many problems with Ustream. I, and Periscope's easy for me. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, one of the ways you can support me and keep me on Periscope and YouTube is by shopping in my Etsy store. <laughs> If you just go to Etsy and you type in Gina B. Aarons, I should show up. Yeah, if you don't belong to the group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, go over and join. We'll admit you. Jerry's going to start a list over there. And um, we will have everybody put suggestions in of what you would like to see. Just like with any other watercolor painting, you can layer your colors right on top of each, each other. Because they're watercolor and they're translucent and they're, you know, water activated, they're going to blend and mix, but that's okay. You're going to get these interesting, fun, um, you know, new secondary colors that you didn't anticipate. I think I want this color. And some of these suggestions I've done on a taped version of Watercolor Wednesday that's already on YouTube, but I didn't do it live, and I don't know that I gave lots of explanations. So it might be good if we're going to keep doing these live lessons to revisit that and do it again. And so we'll do that. And I'll, st I'll probably start the video by showing you what I did the first time, if I've done that subject matter already. But I like to do flowers. Flowers and birds. I like to do fish too, but I have something with birds right now.
Remember when you're saving up for your art supplies or you're trying to, you know, buy art supplies, like right now I'm saving up for my Daniel Smith colors I'm missing. Um, you know, use your coupons when you have them. Save up your money and shop the sales. Um, all of your big box retailers um, have apps and all of the apps have coupons in them. Now a lot of the big box retailers for craft supplies don't have tons of fine art supplies, but they have just enough that will make us happy. <laughs> Let's see, and I'm going to add a little bit of this turquoise color, I think. So you can do these little, you know, stamped images. You can get some practice color blending and shading, and then you can cut them out and you can use them embellishments as embellishments on greeting cards um, or tags or in your art journals. It's a great way to get some practice. Start light and work your way to dark until you're happy. Stamp the image in black so that that is always going to show. And there you go. Isn't that cute? Yeah, you could totally use it for birthday cards or, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Totally use it for birthday cards or, um, there we go. Thank you cards, anything. So think about doing something like that too. Don't be intimidated by the watercolor. Just play. That's how I learned. I have never taken a proper watercolor class. Ever. <laughs> Acrylic, yes. Watercolor, no. I only know from doing. <laughs> a few books, a couple of DVDs, that's it. I recommend um, Janet Rogers, her husband Steve Rogers, and Jean Haynes, all of whom have books and or DVDs, and um, they're fabulous. And they're all expressive watercolor painters, and they teach you a lot about color and light. All right, I think that's it for this morning, guys. Um, we're already a few minutes over how long I thought we would be. So next week we will do flowers. Um, go over to A Life of Art and Self-Expression on Facebook and um, add your suggestions to the list. And um, if you have recommended teachers for watercolor classes online or in person, we have a list for that in the group. And add the list and put a review with the, with the name. Uh, we would appreciate that because that's one of the things my Facebook group is about, recommending great teachers to our fellow artists. All right, that's it for right now. Everybody have a great Wednesday. And I will, it's on Facebook, Erin, yeah. It's called A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And um, everybody have a great Wednesday. Have a great week. And I will see you all next Wednesday here on Periscope. Bye.